So you have an IDEX 3D printer, you have a printer with a triple to one nozzle and you have the ability to print with multiple colors on your 3D printer and you downloaded many files where this was already possible. But now you want to design your own thing, you want to model your own thing and also be able to actually, you know, print in multicolor your own design. How to do that? Well, in Tinkercad, I find a way how you can also do exactly the same thing and understanding the basic principle how you can do a multicolor model print. Here on Zachary's 3D Prints. Hello, this is Zachary and welcome to this video. Shall we get right into the tutorial because it is already a long video, so let's not make it any longer, shall we? Let's get in it. To start decent and also organized to take the ruler, we are going to put it on the edge of the work plane and we are going to select right over here, use midpoint. To keep this very simple, we are going to make a basic cube and put on all six sides the same letters. So we are going to take a basic cube. We are going to write in there and we are going to make sure that it is exactly in the middle of the work plane. So in this case, hundreds, because the whole uh, work plane is 200 by 200, 100. So this cube is now in the middle of the work plane. This is going to be something like a calibration cube. So we are going to import the text that we want to have on each side. We are going to keep it simple. We are going to, so the Y from the Y axis, the X for the X axis, and also the Z. So this is going to be a calibration cube that you can use to test out your IDEX 3D printer multicolor. It doesn't have to be for a IDEX 3D printer, but the basic idea keeps the same. So first of all, we are going to make sure that each letter correspond on the same level and have the same height everywhere. The X is going to be on this side. Of course, we are going to twist it 90 degrees and then also upwards 90 degrees so that it is standing. Of course, it is standing inside of the work plane that you don't want. We are going to lift it up a little bit and we are going to put it just in front of it so that we know where each letter is going to be. I'm going to change this into a different kind of color. I think the same one doesn't really matter. Then we are going to flip this one also in the standing position, lift it like this. And we are going to put the Z also, we are going to twist it and then we are putting it up upwards and then we are going to put it this side. We are going to lift it a little bit higher. We are going to select all of these letters. We are using the alignment tool, doesn't matter which one, and we are putting it on the same height. So we are taking, for example, the Z and we want to have it exactly in the middle. That looks nice, right? We are going to select the cube, hold the shift key, we are clicking on it. Now both uh, objects are selected. We are taking the alignment tool. We are selecting the cube and we are pressing the middle, but also here the middle. Now it almost looks like how we want to have it. Now we are going to do the same thing with the Y. We are going to select the cube. We are using the alignment tool. We are selecting the cube one more time again, just in the middle, just in the middle, something like that. And we are going to do exactly the same thing for the X. We are going to select the cube. We are selecting the alignment tool, aligning on the cube, middle, middle. The Z, Z is not on this side. We are going to twist this. We are going to... So we are going to align the Z with the cube as well. Alignment tool, the cube, middle, and also middle here not this one because then your z is going to disappear and you will never going to see it back again so everything looks nice we are going to put all letters inside of the cube so first the z we are going to use the cube as well alignment tool so we select the z first then the cube alignment tool the cube and then going inside of there now we are going to do the same thing with the Y. We are selecting the alignment tool cube and then this one. Then it just 
is going inside of the cube. That is what we want. Now we are going to do exactly the same thing with the X. We are selecting the cube alignment tool. We are clicking on the cube. We are pressing on this one. One time we have done it. But of course the letters are almost flush with, with the cube. So you we are going to get a little problem here. Or maybe not. We are selecting the X. Clicked. So the X. Hold the shift. Press the Y. And press the Z. I have selected three shapes. I'm going to press the Ctrl C and then Ctrl V. And now I have exactly the same thing. I don't want to mess up anything with these letters. Everything is now flush with the calibration cube or with the cube. I'm going to make sure that all of the shapes are going to be as a group. But first we are going to pull them out so that we are sure that we are looking at the right thing. We are selecting the shapes and we are going to group them. The Z needs to go down all the way down. No problem. We are going to align this with the cube. We have, as you can see it very well, we have here a little cross. The cross is going to be aligned with the rest of that we are looking at. So we are going to twist the Z and we are going to press it all the way down. But first we need to make sure that everything is well aligned so that this side is going to match up with the bottom of the cube, of course. So we are going to push the Z all the way down until it is flush with the, the ground. So that looks like it. The only thing I did is pushing it downwards. So we are going to make it into one group. We are selecting all of the letters, make it into one group. Now we are going to twist it 180 degrees, something like that. And now we are going to shove it right in and that it is aligned with the rest. something like this so this is the x this is the y this is the z everything is visible i see that it's sticking out a little bit it's not really a problem we are selecting the cube alignment tool the cube and then we press that and everything is looking very flush to me so this is grayed out this is grayed out so that is great okay so this was this was part number one we want to have the letters in a different file, but that it will match, I also need to have a hollowed out imprint. Makes sense, right? We deselect, we are selecting this one. That are three shapes in total already as a group. And now we are selecting the opposite side. So the Z, hold your shift, click on it, click on the X and click on the Y. We are going to directly make it out of one group. We are control C, control V, and we are pulling everything out. And as you can see, this is a whole group and it looks nice, right? I mean, this is what we want. Pull it away so that you can select everything that is in the fray. But we want to select all of the letters, making sure that we are making it hollow. So everything was as a group, which we want it and then we press hole now we are selecting the cube shift select the cube and then press group and now you have a whole out version of the calibration cube all is looking nice we didn't move this calibration cube it's still at 100 100 that is what we want as name we are going to change it into the name i, I will call it test cube enter and so this little group is going to be exactly in the same spot in a different work plane. So we are going to select it. Control C. We are copying it. And then we are pressing delete. Now we are going to make a new tab. New 3D design. We are taking the ruler. We are putting it exactly on the same spot. So that we have this. Then we are going to use midpoint. And what we have copied, we are going to place it exactly in the middle. If you copy and paste something in Tinkercad, it will always shift a few few millimeters to the right or to the left, mostly to the right. And because of that, you want to make sure that you are on the right spot. You can drag and drop it or drag it into the place that you want, but you can also use it as we did before. 100. And we are using the midpoint, not the outer point. And 100. 
And now this is exactly in the same spot as the, the cube itself. So this we, we are going to call test cube text. Now we are going to export it and put both of the STL files in the same folder. For this part, I'm using Ultimaker Cura 13.1, something like that. We are going to import the test cube, test cube multicolor, and we are selecting both files and we press open. So as you can see, these are both on the build plate because we selected them both. In here, we are going to select this one. We are saying like, okay, extruder one PLA, okay? And the other one, we are going to select, but different color because you want to print in multicolor. Once we have selected that, we are going to select them both. We are going to click on merge models. We click on it and then we are getting this. And there you have it. Now you're going to slice it and you are going to put the SD card into your IDEX 3D printer or maybe you want to do something similar like this, but then with three colors or four colors or other colors, it doesn't really matter. So for example, if you are doing a three color uh, model, then you need to make one base file and then two or three other files next to it in order to merge all the parts together in three, three, four or five or six different colors, the same kind of way I have done with this IDEX printer. So that every, every layer or every part of your model with multicolor, that they are all going to be combined and that the slicer slices like that, that the printer will understand which kind of color you want at that specific place of your model. So that is how I do it in Tinkercad and using Cura. Maybe there are some other ways, but I was working on my IDEX 3D printer. I had some issues with it and I got some nice results out of it. I'm going to show you right now. After slicing, I put the SD card right into the uh, IDEX printer, the JD Maker Artist D Pro. I'm not very into the IDEX printing yet. There are some things that I still need to solve, but hey, I got my first own design. Well, I don't know if a calibration cube is under the own design, but there are some other things that I did in the past and it actually works. So this calibration cube, I printed it on my IDEX 3D printer and just look at it, how it looks like. It's not totally perfect. I still need to dial in my, my IDEX 3D printer, but I mean, look at this. This is red, this is red, this is red. This is all teal from Polyterra PLA. It is looking amazing. I mean, hey, for something designed in Tinkercad, I do need to say it does look very nice. If you're still watching this video, thank you. You are amazing. Did you know that? Please subscribe to this channel hit the notification button to don't miss out on any of the new videos, live streams or other things I do on this channel. If you do like also Minecraft gaming or some other gameplay, then check me out on Easy Zack YouTube channel. And if you want to see some live streams with Minecraft gaming, check out twitch.tv slash Zagary's world. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please like, and I will see you next time. Peace, bye-bye.